this update is likely going to be very loosely edited, if it's edited at all, really. Maybe because of a shortage of time due to the ridiculous work schedule I have. I'm not going to get into it. But uh, I had another video update recorded a couple weeks ago, but it posted um, because of this shortage of time crap that's going on with me. Uh, basically, uh, new roles were cast in kill shots. Uh, you can go to the official website, see the, the full cast. And we now have almost full cast. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> Robert Karcher, he was cast as the crime boss of a candlist. Uh, Claudia DeVickery as the Sendak, a mercenary and head of the security for the crime boss. And David Goodlow as a sort of internal security specialist for the canvas kind of guy who handles the day-to-day -day operations of his syndicate and so on and so forth. Uh, those actors are going to appear in episodes 7 and 8, respectively titled McCandless and Axel. Uh, I portray Axel, the jewel thief, in the series for that one episode. Uh, things have not gone anywhere this month uh, for numerous reasons out of my control. Uh, we'll get into it. There's no point in getting into it. It's behind us. So we just have to deal with the future. Uh, basically, nothing was shot in November. Nothing's going to get shot in November because of my overflowed schedule that I have no control over. Uh, so we're setting sights on December to get something done, regardless of temperatures, whatever. We just, we just, we don't have any choice. I mean, a year ago we stopped kept delaying things, put things on hold because the weather was getting so harsh, uh, temperature-wise, and just everything else regardless, everything else with that, but uh, at this point I really can't uh, let weather stop me unless it's just terrible, I mean, unless it's just absolutely not workable, we just gotta break through it somehow, some way. Uh, you know, all these people I've got on board right now are very, uh, very committed to the pro project to face those kinds of challenges if it, if it comes to that, which it really is coming to that since we've gotten so extremely little done in the last couple months since uh, we started the, the rush to get things done with Nick Deach and we got next to nothing done. We got two scenes shot. I still don't know when he's going to be back to finish the shooting on the film, so... That's up in the air. I have no way to anticipate any of that. Uh, I just gotta deal with the people I have right now, and it, but it's it's grinding. It's going nowhere right now because they're just people keep contacting about this, that, and the other thing about production necessities and all this other stuff are not getting back to me. They're not responding to my messages for me to actually move forward with anything. I can't get a shooting location locked down. I can't get. Uh, this, the, this thing or that thing done uh, because no one's returning my, my messages to, for me to make a move. I can't plan a shoot if I don't have a shooting location for it. I can't do certain shoots if I don't have a certain whatever, certain crew member or whatever is lined up to actually get things done. So you can see my, see the issues that are facing me right now. And it's always such a pain in the ass. And I face this on every 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 major production I go into, it just comes into this sort of thing and I don't know. This is it it's always like when I get to these moments it's like why do I keep putting myself in this situation of going forward into a big production with a lot of people and no money and all this stuff. I mean the only thing I can gather is that the end product is worth it to see the, uh, see the final product, the fully edited, the fully shot, the fully scored uh, film in front of me and see what all the hard work was, was for and see how it was worth something. And uh, right now I've gotten some extra cash flow from, uh, I just have extra cash flow right now. So a $25 submission fee for a film festival entry is not a trivial, is not a big matter for me. It's 
it, it, it's easily done, so I'm going to at least submit episode number three, Lou, out to the Midwest Independent Film Festival here in Chicago and see if I have any luck with it. Uh, one step at a time, and I can flood the market with submissions, just one entry at a time. See where that goes, and if that goes somewhere good, then I'll explore other options. But uh, right now, uh, holiday coming up, I got no, not much of any time for myself to get anything done because I'm gonna be working so many days. And before the end of the month, there's just not much leeway, there's not much room for me to do anything. Uh, the main thing I'm, I need to do is to finish the final script of Killshot number 10, episode 10. And it's not the fact that I don't know what I, I've always known how the thing was going to end. I've known that for a long, 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 long time. It's just putting it all together in script form, how to make it something that lives up for the rest of the series, that has uh, smart scenarios, smart uh, twists, smart everything. Just Just keep it intelligent, keep it sharp, and keep it lean, keep it to the point, but uh, it's just it's just been a tough road just trying to figure out exactly how to approach the whole thing, I've come up with so many different ways, and they just haven't gone anywhere, uh, I have ideas now, uh, that I hope will go somewhere, but you never know, but uh, it's hard to keep it on track when I don't know when, I, when it is that I need to get this thing done by, because I don't know when Nick's going to be back to finish his work, so it's kind of like, uh, I keep going away from it, coming back from it, and all that stuff, because, like, well, I feel like I have time, but I don't know how much time, so it's like, I don't know, there's no, I don't feel pressure to get it done, because I don't know what, what the time frame is that I need to get it done by, and, uh, it's, it's just a, just one of those things you got to work through and trying to get done and trying to figure it out somehow you know it's whatever it is it is uh as always uh the whole series has been a whole conglomeration a whole compilation of different influences from everything from everywhere everything i've watched over the last year and change and things i've read things i've watched things whatever it is I mean I've taken in so much from so many different sources that it's too, too much to list uh, in short order but uh, I've recently just started back into reading comic books DC comics and uh, inevitably that's gonna find a way back into things uh, the way I got back into it was that I was thinking of P.I. Dangerous again and trying I was writing a, a new P.I. Dangerous script that may or may not get produced who knows uh, but uh, <clears throat> I'm just trying to get back into that mindset, and it just kind of evolved into that. That uh, started reading DC Comics. I, I picked up a couple issues of Justice League, <laughs> as I'm going to show you right now. Uh, Justice League comic books. That uh, because DC Comics is kind of like uh, they re revamped their continuity all over again, but they really did it in a really bold way by, because uh, a lot of their mainstay comics, like DC Comics, Batman, Superman, Action Comics, have always remained their original numbering from way back in the 30s and 40s. But now they just completely wiped the slate clean and everything started from number one. So it's, so it's I'm liking, I'm really, really digging this new Justice League uh, storyline that they're doing where they're kind of showing how the team came together. And all that stuff, uh, Batman, Superman, Green Lantern, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Flash, so on and so forth. All these characters came together, it kind of starts out with a Flash five years before, five years earlier storyline, and then it'll probably jump ahead after, after the storyline's done, which they're uh, leading up to battling Darkseid. But uh, it's a formation of the team where none of them trust any, one another, they don't know each other at all, really. It is a really great thing. I mean, it's got uh, art by one of my favorite artists, Jim Lee. The guy's fantastic. He, he, I loved what he did in mean, Batman Hush a couple of years ago and everything. But uh, the point of me mentioning all this is that now that I'm reading comics and not just reading comics, but exposing myself to a lot of DC comic stuff that I've 
in, in, in animated series, animated films, all that kind of stuff. It's in somehow inevitably that's going to sh- lead into this kill shot episode uh, finale. Somehow it's going to it's going to affect me somehow. It's going to give me some. Maybe that's maybe has one of these issues, one of these films, something like that. There's that missing cog. You never know where you're going to find it. Uh, it's like. It's like uh, creating a song. You never know where the, the last piece of imp- inspiration is going to come from to really make the thing click. You never know where it's going to come from, how it's going to evolve and develop. And, you know, uh, I just got to keep exposing myself to new things all the time just to keep the creative fire burning and keep throwing that fuel on the fire. Uh, I can get our other things about new DC comic animated films I just saw just saw but I'll save that for my forever cinematic uh, blog where I do movie reviews and all that shit but uh, anyway uh, just did a Hemi show last night turned out absolutely awesome Wastegate another heavy metal band fantastic heavy metal band here in Chicago they they were they're flat out amazing and uh, they're actually going to be my first paid videography job. They're going to be performing again with Hemi in, on January 12th uh, at Reggie's Rock Club in Chicago. Uh, also playing with Armored Assault and Speed Freak and I'm very excited just to be there for that show just to see it and hopefully I can get the other bands interested in my service and uh, I, I did a uh, revamp the services page on ravensfilm.com if you go there check it out it has price list it has a pitch on a pitch and description of the services that I offer videography editing DVD authoring actors reels and web design so you can check that out you can download the price list you can contact me uh, the prices are designed around uh, sort of the burgeoning local actor type of thing so it's not saying that it's it, I would like to say it's professional quality that you're going to get but you're not going to have to pay a large professional's price it's a very affordable very reasonable thing for someone who's on a smaller scale or at least a more uh, uh, I mean no denying, denying, denying we have economic troubles these days and people are just trying to find the best uh, price for the best product and you know I'm willing to offer that uh, accommodation for people. I mean, I'm sure friends of mine would say my services could be uh, more valuable than those prices, but I think they'd be very supportive of this idea. Obviously, Trent of Emmy is the guy who pushed me, well, not so much pushed me, encouraged me into this sort of thing. Uh, he's been so impressed with all the work I've done for him in the last year that he just he suggested this, we recommended that this was this would be a good idea for me because I've always thought of wanting to do something like this, but it's just I've just never had the mind to uh, forge it into anything that's marketable or just always kind of like sat around and just kind of like never really done anything to move that forward. But hey, now I have something to show people. I have. Web design, websites I've designed. I have got actors' reels that I put together for people. I have all these shows I've shot for Hemi. The, so I have proof of work, proof of quality to show people who might be interested in these services. So it's it's the right time. It feels like the right time. And if a band like Wastegate was very solid, very awesome band, a very kind of Pantera vibe to them. Uh, that I'm, I'm very excited about myself personally as a heavy metal fan is interested in this I can imagine that many other fans would be game for, the, for having this sort of extra promotional tool for them So, and that's the idea behind it just helping other artists promote their themselves in a more efficient manner uh, you know, we can all use all the help we can get and uh, doing all the work that I've done over the last several years, uh, I always could, I can always use an extra hand doing something somewhere. And, you know, uh, 
kind of backtrack thing for a second, just talking about people helping me out and friends and whatnot. Uh, big thanks. A few weeks late, but uh, big thanks to, to Trent and Steve Fraser for helping out with the kill shot casting process. I could not have done it remotely as efficiently without them. It would have been a very heavy chore to go through without their help. Just uh, just their just their time, their patience, and their 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 great personalities and attitudes just helped move the whole thing along very well. And I'm glad that the process is over, but uh, I'm glad that I had those great guys to help me out. And I wish there was more things in general for Reddit's Productions to say. But anything beyond this would just be a, a random rant, and I kind of rambled on enough. So, that's about all I have to report right now. Where things go, how they develop from here is just a day-by-day, week-by-week basis. When we have something more, you'll, you'll see it, as always. So, 